Hello, everybody. This will be airing on my channel on Friday morning. What is Friday's date? Are we almost, we're almost halfway through January, aren't we? Today is, so Friday. We're almost done. <laughs> oh, yes, we're almost, what am I thinking? Yes, we're almost done because I am literally at countdown right now to my 40th birthday, which I struggle with age, so so we'll be talking about those attachments later on. But it is Friday on my channel, January 27th, early the morning to hours of probably 10 a.m. is usually when I schedule these videos to drop. And I am here with one of my besties, Emmy. And we got some – how are you doing today, Emmy, first of all? I, I always skip that question sometimes because I literally talk to everyone I'm done with I'm chatting with all day anyway. So I forget to <laughs> – <laughs> do I'm doing pretty good. I had a I had a major uh, revelation that I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video today. Um, I'm in a school that takes you through um, a course in miracles, the book A Course in Miracles, yep. and the the lesson today, the lesson today just blew my socks off. <laughs> It was like, it was, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to share a funny, the people in our, um, our course community, it's called living the course. If anybody ever wants to look it up, um, it's closed for this year, but you can get on the wait, wait list for next year if you want to join. But <laughs> when we have these huge, deep revelations, like the one I had today, they call them course gasms. <laughs> Perfect. Like this revelation I had today. I mean, I, I was just like beaming from ear to ear. I was crying. I had snot bubbles, like you name it. It was, it was just, it was amazing. I, you're going to be on TV. <laughs> I think he's cute. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just, yeah, I'm just kind of reeling from that. I kind of feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Like, like I just seen a blue sky for the first time or something. It's, it's just like, wow. I love that, of course, guys. And then we'll get later, it, we'll get into this later because we're going to look at the astrology too because we got some pretty uh, gnarly things going on in the uh, in the potion. Uh, I'll call it God's potion, right? His his potion of prescriptions, <laughs> his his uh, alchemy for, for what's going on with us. And I will say there was one time, Emmy, and we're going to get deeper into this because sometimes I do feel like our ego has to be pushed to the place of total despair in order to have some breakthroughs. And I will never forget this one moment. And we say this in yoga, we have Samadhi, which is like one of the limbs, which means total oneness with God. And you'll have like Samadhi with a capital S and Samadhi with a lowercase s. So there's moments where you kind of get it, but moments where you really get it. But then you'll kind of come back down again. And this was definitely a moment for me with Samadhi with a capital S. I, at the time, I was going through like this really devastating breakup. And you know, breakups can be very dramatic. They're their own telenovela sometimes. We look back and we like giggle at how ridiculous we were in a breakup. And I remember driving into my apartment complex and I was just so devastated. And I was in that just pit of despair and all of a sudden, I felt this like wave come over me where like my energy lifted up, but it was, it didn't leave my body. It just lifted off. And I realized in that moment that nothing was real, that this was all an illusion, a hologram created for me to understand. And for that moment, driving into my apartment complex, I started laughing. Because it was the, the it was hysterical to me that I was so upset over something that wasn't even real. And, that, and I know that sounds crazy for people who are just new to this this journey. But then all of a sudden I came right back down into myself and I was devastated again. But I remembered that. I remember that like it was yesterday, that feeling of having that realization. And not only was it was it not real, but everything was all kind of a mirror of my own soul and somebody else's because we're all connected anyway. We're all one soul, a fractal. We're a fractal of one big soul anyway. And so I was really just experiencing myself as a soul and that realization hit me and it made me like giggle for a moment. I was like, holy shit, this is absolutely hysterical. Like, why am I so upset? Like my ex is literally a fractal of me as well. And even though we're apart, we're always together because we're all one and we're just all knowing each other. We're knowing our own selves, which is one anyway. And then I 
went back back down and became devastated again. You know, so you have these like moments of clarity in this crazy hologram that we call life, you know. Um, and so, so, but, uh, but yeah, I love that cor course, cor cor coarse-asms. Coarse-gasms. Coarse-gasms. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching if your wife is having more coarse gasms doing her shadow work you might be in trouble <laughs> you might need to step it up a little bit <laughs> gosh. oh my gosh okay so i just wanted to talk about um the astrology a little bit what's just one piece of the astrology there's so much so much going on so much going on but what what's What's going to be good is that in February, we have energies coming in and, and maybe we can do another show in February, but we, ha we have energies coming in that are going to be beautifully supportive of, of the, the growth and whatever it, it was that came up for you during this, this period of time from December uh, 2nd until February 5th, which is, is that your birthday? Yeah. Is, is it the 4th? And mine's the fourth. It's the day after my birthday. Of course, okay. of so course, the universe is like tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, starting on December 2nd, um, we had a yod form. And what a yod is, is a an aspect pattern in astrology. It's nicknamed the finger of God. Because, you know, in, in a natal chart, a yod is... One of the rarer um, aspect patterns, um, not you know impossible, but it, it's it's a little bit more rare than some of the other uh, aspect patterns that that we see. So they call it the finger of God because it is is hyper focused on the apex or the point, the tip of the triangle. A yacht is a triangle. It's a very long, skinny triangle. So you have this short base at the bottom, and then you have these two <clears throat> very long aspects called quincunx up to the point of the triangle. At the tip of the triangle is the south node. And the south node is it's where we've been, like past life stuff, um, it's we're bringing in the wounds that we that we had but we're also bringing in the gifts and abilities that we've had in past lives so those gifts and abilities were being activated in a lot of people simultaneously with the wounds that we need to to be to be healed so which is why the last couple of months for many people have been so difficult there's just been this inescapable heaviness in the heart space of these collective wounds that we've carried with us from from past lives and and they're they're being activated and highlighted by the current situation that you're in right now so the south node is at the tip of this triangle <clears throat> and again it represents your gifts and talents and also your repressed wounds from from the past now the south node is in scorpio and scorpio can represent all of the repressed pain so it's really really amplified on these wounds it, it's just really accentuated almost inescapable and then at the bottom of the triangle you have chiron and chiron is i've heard it called a, a comet i've heard it called an asteroid i've heard it called a planet you know whatever you want to call this this body chiron um, <clears throat> is named after uh, a Greek centaur. And the centaur was a healer. And um, paradoxically, he couldn't heal his own wound. So, or wounds. So, so Chiron is named after that. And it's nicknamed the wounded healer. And in the other spot is Mars. So you have Chiron in Aries, Mars in Gemini at the bottom of this uh, triangle and together I'm just looking at my notes here together they can activate energy the energy needed to accomplish this goal so and by energy needed I mean our constant focus on this really hefty almost oppressive feeling in in the heart space um so I know that's not really you know the kind of energy that we want because it's so difficult but it did give us the energy to be able to look at this stuff um 
So this yad is like screaming shadow work, shadow work, shadow work, shadow work. And it, especially if you're in this community, you know, we're, we're all healers, whether you have a modality or not, you're, you're, you could be the healer in your family. You could be um, the tiebreaker in generational stuff. You could be um, healing ancestral wounds. Like if you are drawn to the body of work that Bryce puts forth and, and the stuff that I have on my channel, if you're drawn to that, you're probably a healer. Um, and so a lot of people in this community have, have felt, um, similarly, it's just, it's been a, a rough couple months. It really has now today and tomorrow Chiron is making a square to Mercury and squares are the kinds of aspects that are, are motivating. They kind of get a bad rap because they, they produce this tension and tension is often perceived as bad. But without the tension or or the fire under our ass, we're not going to do anything about it, right? So when Chiron and Mercury are making an interaction, it's all about our words, the words that we use to harm ourselves or harm others. And conversely, the words that we use to heal ourselves and heal others. So if, if you have someone in your life who is... Um, new to speaking their truth just have a little compassion because it may not come out with love <laughs> and and also if if you are feeling the need to speak your truth um do it absolutely do it mars and gemini is very activating to the throat chakra however a common pitfall is that we don't speak our truth with love we just want to get it we just want to hurry up and get it out especially if it's something that has seemed to ha, has been like repressed or or stuck and you, you just haven't been able to get yourself to the point to, to speak it out we just want to hurry up we know hurry up and get it out but we don't oftentimes we don't do that with love so just just be mindful of of your words the next couple of days and and how they affect yourself and and others um so yeah, this this is that's the end of my notes. I was just looking at at my page here, but but yeah, that's what we've had going on the last couple of months. And um, myself in particular, I have really had to pull back and cocoon because some of these these energies and these feelings and different things that were coming up were so deep and so heavy. Um, it, it just, it felt really oppressive and it, it was just, it was almost inescapable. And for me, what was coming up, um, is my, my CPTSD was being activated from past abuse, um, abuse from childhood growing up, uh, abuse from the beginning of my relationship with my husband. And <clears throat> so that was, I believe the, the wounds or wound from this life and from past lives that were being highlighted for me. And my PTSD kept my C PTSD kept getting re-triggered over and over and over. And the revelation I had today <laughs> was that now let me gather my thoughts here because this is I'm still chewing on this. It was so big. So when you grow up in a situation where there is perpetual abuse, what happens to the child's nervous system is they become trauma bonded. Their nervous system gets wired in a way that um, expects or attracts the abusive behavior, followed by lots of love bombing. And as the child grows up, they attract more people that do the same things. They abuse and then love bomb. And what we don't realize is that when the abuse stops or when we get out of situations that are abusive, we do it to ourselves because our nervous system is wired that way. We are conditioned to unconsciously or subconsciously believe that in order to be loved, we have to be hurt first. In order to have you know, this, these feelings of, of good come in, we have to feel bad first. And so we will unconsciously or subconsciously perpetuate these kinds of situations to create that cycle in our nervous system. It's so subtle and so deep and so unconscious that 
the healing comes in layers. I've been working on this stuff for a very long time, a couple decades. Same. And this, this layer was peeled off today that was just so massive. Um, so what was what's being triggered for me is um, my husband's alcoholism. Now, he he does not do the things that he did in the beginning of my relationship. And my dad was also an alcoholic, similar types of abuse. My dad's no longer alive. He's not in the picture. So my husband went through some changes recently. And those changes, he just kind of fell into his crutch. And he's drinking more. He's not doing anything. He's not being abusive. He's he's just drinking more. And this this drinking more is triggering my PTSD because I keep thinking in my mind, I'm afraid that he's going to call me names. I'm afraid that he's going to yell at me for hours. I'm afraid that he is going to punch a hole in the wall. I'm afraid that he is going to call me names. I'm afraid of all these things that are not happening, that happened in the past. They don't exist right now, but this wound is being triggered regardless and my mind, my conditioning, my ego is taking me to the past and reliving all of these things, even if they're not happening. So my mind, my ego is attacking me. I'm attacking myself and creating this cycle. It's like, and it was, it's like the ego's autoimmune disorder. Yeah. If you have an autoimmune disorder, which both Emmy and I have been diagnosed that your nervous system is attacking itself. The ego is attacking itself, basically. Yeah, because I have CPTSD as well. I understand what you're saying 100%. It, it is mind blowing. And and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not negating or um, discrediting anyone's experience. You know, this, this is a real thing, especially if you are in a situation where you are experiencing abuse. Um, you know, it's important for us to stand up for ourselves, to set boundaries, to enforce those boundaries. And if the people do not respect our boundaries, then maybe we have to, you know, leave or, or surround ourselves with different people. You know, the situation with my husband and I, once I started standing up for myself and setting boundaries, yeah, it rocked the boat a little bit, but he respected that. And eventually he changed. And, and the same thing, you know, with, with other people and said, you know, really have to look at your situation, your, your individual situation. I'm, I'm definitely not saying if you're in an abusive situation to stay, definitely no. not. It's and the after, it's the aftermath of the abuse. So what Emmy is saying is like, it does, the abuse does not exist anymore, but this is the aftermath of, of the, of the imprint it's made on, on the false sense of self. So when we say ego, we're not talking about, again, we're not talking about like the jock, everybody has a false sense of self, right? And so it's that false sense of self imprinting on the big, the biggest uh, predictor for future behavior is past behavior. And so I said to you, Emmy, this morning, like someone said to me, what's something that really affected me? Like, it's not the future we fear. It's, it's the, it's the past repeating itself that we fear. And that's part of that trauma. And, and a lot of people, so it's, your body starts to react because something triggered that. And she's saying it's that realization that all her husband's doing is just drinking. That's all he's picking up a beer and drinking it. But there's no, but her, her identity has already associated that with something bad. And I'll let you go on Emmy. Cause I think that's so important that what you're saying, like this is the after yeah. effect. Yes. Yeah. The after effect. So who I really am, who you are, um, Bryce and who you are watching this video, you are a perfect, complete, whole, innocent being. You, you are untouchable. There is nothing anybody can do or say to harm who you really are. The essence of who you really are is God. Nothing can harm God. Nothing can kill God. Nothing can destroy God. Nothing can, uh, you know, if we believe, say someone calls you a name. If we believe that we are that name, we are identifying and attaching to a, what Bryce said, a false sense of ourself. Because who we really are is perfect. We're perfect. We're innocent. Um, we are love. We are light. Nothing can really hurt that. But 
if we believe we are this false sense of self, this character, then when someone calls us a name and, and we're hurting from that, we're in agreement with what they said. We believe what they said, even if intellectually, oh, I know I'm not a stupid idiot. Intellectually, I know that. But somewhere within me, something about me believes what that person said, and I agree with it. And so therefore, I suffer. It's, it's, I, I, I don't, I hope I'm explaining it. You are, and it's so hard. This is one of the hardest concepts when you first start the spiritual journey. You know, I always say spirituality is about you knowing your own spirit and knowing your own soul. And I mean, this is the whole crux of the Yoga Sutras, right? It's what is Prakriti, what is Purusha? Prakriti is the false sense of self, which is also nature. And Purusha is the soul. It's the it's the eternal soul. And Patanjali says the cause of human suffering is what it may just summed it up. You are confusing your false sense of identity with your eternal self. So my eternal self is not Bryce. Emmy's eternal self is not Emmy. If we look at past lives, let's say in the life before this, I was some some schmuck named Joe. That's not who my soul is. It was just for that moment what my soul, that's the costume my soul decided to put on. Now my, my soul is put on the costume of Bryce. With that being said, as Emmy said, that doesn't mean that you disrespect yourself because this costume, this avatar, we have a nervous system. We have the propensity for things like CPTSD, um, trauma responses, so that we can't, the soul can use that if that's the friction. What Emmy is talking about, so that's her friction. I have CPTSD too. I know it's again, that's complex post traumatic stress disorder. And again, the biggest difference between PTSD and CPTSD from my trauma therapist, from what she said, is PTSD is way easier to treat than CPTSD. PTSD is like one event happens, a major car accident, or you're at a war and something blows up, and you are immediately shifted. Your your nervous system immediately goes into a shift. Um, because of that event. CPSD, however, is layers of abuse. And it's usually very covert. Sometimes there is overt, but a lot of it's mixed with very covert abuse. And so as an adult, and Emmy's right, it, you are triggering. I, for a long time, now I admit, I like bad boys. I've always dated boys that are covered in tattoos one time I dated a boy for a long time who wore skinny jeans, aka girls' jeans and guy liner. Like I that's just kind of but with that being said, I always because of my relationship with my dad, I interpreted love is that there was a lot of pain involved and there was a lot of yelling and screaming. And I interpreted that love as passion, but that was passion. And it took going through that multiple times for me to realize, well, one night I almost lost my life because of it, but to go into therapy to realize I was clinging to a reality that wasn't true. And But here's the beautiful thing about true spirituality. Just like in the Ashtanga practice, which Emmy has been diving headfirst into the Ashtanga practice, the Ashtanga practice of yoga is one of the most intense physical exercises you will ever do. Um, we were just talking off camera about how much it changes your body. I mean, we have a joke in Ashtanga where when people get started, we call it, people get Ashtangorexic because all of a sudden they just start losing a bunch of weight because you're burning. I mean, it's very intense and um, very high intensity. But what the beauty of that is, it's so physically intense is that, that you're actually saying, okay, you think you're your body? Well, then let's work your body. Let's use that then. If that's who you think you are, let's pull it and push it and move it and shape it and mold it and make it stronger and make it do so that these, these held ideas about yourself can surface. And then once they surface to a point of, I mean, we've talked about it. I mean, there are days I cr I've crawled to my yoga mat, days you have too, where you're crying and you're a hot mess on your yoga mat because the reality of what you think you are, the hidden parts of you, the shadow that you don't, that you do think you are, but you don't want people to know, start to surface. And so as you start to 
massively dive headfirst into this false sense of self, only then can that friction come for you to go, oh, but I'm not that. I'm not my experiences. I'm not that at all. This is just my experience mm -hmm. now in this life. So, um, so yeah. And with the CPSD, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make light. I don't think Emmy's trying to make light of it either. It's very serious. Um, I myself have had major, um, I mean, I've talked about it. I have a weight blanket I, I sleep under, and this is something that I'll probably deal with. Emmy will probably deal with these little roller coasters for the rest of our lives. But, but our souls picked that. I was just reading with Chiron while you were speaking, Emmy, about it, how he is the entity that uses his wounds as medicine. And that is the crux of what the Yoga Sutras are saying, which is you take those wounds and that's the alchemist, right? And you transmute them to your medicine. My relationships with men before my early 30s was so toxic that it, I almost lost my life. But I'm so grateful that I went through that because I had an incredible trauma therapist who really used Eastern philosophy with me and EMDR therapy with me to help me understand where I myself was not healed. And through that, I had somebody, a therapist can be like a teacher helping you see those parts of yourselves. And after that happened, I saw a shift in the men. All of a sudden, naturally, I was just attracting really nice guys. Who were still covered in tattoos and still skateboarded and did yoga and all that kind of stuff, but really nice guys that were very good have been very good to me and very very healthy relationships. And um, I have not since since going through that, I've not attracted a man who was abusive. I've not attracted a man who, you know, so that side of me was was healed. Um, and so I, I, you know, it's it's actually when you start to see that your wounds do become your medicine. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if you have a really difficult person in your life, um, if you can try, I know it's so hard. It's so hard when we're triggered. But if you could try to look past the person or the people or the situation and try to find the wound that's being triggered, um, these situations will will go away. I'm going to share a trigger um it was a financial trigger and I, I kept having this trigger come up um, over and over and over. And it was the same thing. And I kept journaling about the same thing. And I'm like, what am I not getting about this? What am I not getting? And what I didn't realize was that every time I would journal about it and um, relate it to the three beliefs of ego, um, I got, I learned about the three beliefs of ego from Aaron Abke's um, YouTube channel. And he's got uh, a series of videos in there called spiritual intelligent, where he spiritual intelligence, where he goes through and explains this stuff and explains a certain type of journaling on how to work through catalysts or triggers. And so I, I use that journaling exercise repeatedly um, as I was working through this trigger. And once once the trigger was through, worked through, it was financial trigger. And, and what it was, was my husband and I growing up had the same wounds. We grew up very, very poor. We had lack, uh, uh, a lack or poverty mindset. And our behavior was opposite, though. My behavior growing up in a very poor family was to sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice to the nth degree to make sure the bills were paid. Bill's behavior, my husband's behavior was, oh, I need to hurry up and buy what I want and need before the money's gone on the bills. So our behavior was was opposite, but it was stemming from the same wound. Well, once we worked through that that wound together and and were triggered enough by each other's behavior, his behavior triggered me, my behavior triggered him. But once we worked through um, this trigger enough times and just finally got it, our financial health shifted and changed and it it changed and shifted so quickly we were both like what the heck just happened here and it, it was it's just it's just amazing and you know i'm 
Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's literally what happens. Like when I healed that wound with dating terrible men, all of a sudden terrible men weren't coming around anymore. Yeah, it's like you 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 heal the wound and your that that junk is gone, that lower vibrational stuff is gone and so you're you're left lighter, your vibration is higher and then you attract um more energy, new energy and money is just a form of energy. And because our mindsets were changing, we healed these wounds, we attracted we attracted more money. And it's just like, it's so hard to see money as energy because the way that we grow up, like we're, we're taught that if you want money, you have to work harder. You have to put more time in. You have to do this, do that. I don't necessarily think it's anything that you do because if you chase something, the more you chase it, the farther away it's going to get. But if you do the work, you can attract it. It's, it's so, it's so amazing. It is. All that stuff is just, and, and you know, it doesn't look like what you think it would look like. Like I've read so many books on law of attraction and why can't I get this? And why isn't, why am I not raising my vibration high enough? And, you know, it, it's just, it doesn't look like I thought it would look at all. It doesn't feel like I thought it would feel. It doesn't happen the way that no. I thought it would it's happen. It's not like bippity boppity boo, hocus pocus. There it is. That's the that's the problem I have. Like with the secret, is they make it sound oh, just change your mind around it. Well, no. If you're having, if you're following that that doctrine, and you're having a hard time manifesting what you want, well, that means that there's a wound inside of you that's still un uncured and un un unattended. And so the, that's why. I mean, that's, that was one of the most simplest things that was so, so mind blowing for me when I realized that like, okay, so I keep having crappy job after crappy job after crappy job or crappy boyfriend after crappy boyfriend after crappy boyfriend. Well, what's the common denominator? It's me or whoever's watching. Well, your psyche, your soul, it, your soul doesn't give a shit. Remember, you are not your soul. So your soul doesn't give a shit how you as the faults of the self are feeling your soul only purpose is to take the exam take the test take the course of this life to learn itself and so if there's a part of your life that's being neglected and not healed it's going to keep attracting things into it to be the catalyst for your healing so it's going to bring in another crappy boss or crappy job or it's going to bring in another crap, crappy boyfriend until you finally go ha huh, okay i see what you're doing i need to work on me i need to figure out what in me is not being healed being attended to that keeps pulling this in right it's like a highlighter it's like taking a highlighter and being like okay I'm going to highlight this part because this wound is not healed in you. And my, your soul's like, listen here, dumbass. Like, this is why I came to earth was to fix this shit. We didn't come to earth to look pretty and eat popcorn and, you know, watch reality TV. We came to earth to actually go to earth school. Like you got into the Harvard of planets. Earth, you know, earth school is the hardest three, third density to be in. So we're going to do this course, you know, and, 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 and until you actually, it's like, you know, I'm not a parent, but if you have a child in school and they're struggling with, with a subject, let's say they're struggling with math and all their other subjects are great, but they're really struggling in math. Well, parents will do anything. They'll work with them with flashcards, get a tutor, really help them figure out where the, there's nothing, something's not connecting with the subject. It's the same thing. Your soul's going, okay, little chickadee, like, we need to look at this. And when it's healed, all of a sudden, there's no need. Once it's healed, there's no need for the lesson anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like with the, the relationship thing. Um, I, I get so mad. I get so mad. Like, why can't I find a good guy? Like when I was dating, why, why can't I, like, I, I'd feel so like I just, I just placed everything outside of me. Like I was the victim. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm so nice. How do you, how can you do this to me? Like, I'm just so nice. Like, like what is the problem here? And, and, and that's the thing. I, I was focusing everything outward and like what Bryce is saying, everything that happens to us in this life 
is meant to clue us in on what we need to learn, how we need to grow, what we need to look at to heal. So I was so attached and so focused on um, wanting to be loved in a certain way that I wasn't seeing that all of these experiences were showing me that I needed to heal something within myself. And I had no idea. I had no idea. I, I would just get so angry and so fed up. And I and that would push me further into feeling like a victim. Like I was just helpless. Yeah. Helpless. I will say too, it's all like, so like, if you can't find love, where are you not loving yourself? If you feel like you've been betrayed, where have you betrayed yourself? I mean, Shanti talks about this. And I will say something. So in the chat earlier today in our signal group, they were talking about codependency. And so I want to kind of talk about that a little bit too, like what is codependency? So a lot of this too comes back to a sense of self. And what I mean by self is I'm not talking about the small self, the small self with the lowercase s, which is the false identity, the false sense of self. I'm talking about the self with a capital S, which is the soul. It's that being able to anchor into yourself, you know? And so with things like codependency, if that's something that someone struggles with, if that's something they're, they're learning, they struggle with codependency, it doesn't mean that you're constantly hanging out with people and doing things with people. Like you could have a very close knit family, a close knit group of friends, and you just enjoy spending time with them. That doesn't mean you're codependent. What that means, a codependent from a mental health perspective, means that you are dependent upon another person outside of yourself to give you a sense of self. Okay, that's codependency. And that's when you see the unhealthy relationships where one person in the relationship is dependent upon. You usually see this with narcissists and empaths, where one person becomes dependent upon the other person to give them a sense of self and whenever you're reaching outside of yourself to define yourself it's always going to be problematic because that's within you and so um it's always about you and resting into you who you are and it's the same thing so it's the same thing with like dating bad men where is that love wound in you that needs to be, that needs the Neosporin and the Band-Aid and the kiss boo-boo better, you know, make it better. Um, that only you can really, you know, no one, you know, I, I, I know Emmy's been through a lot of programs. I've been through therapy, yoga. The therapist, the teacher is literally like sitting there giving you the template, but you do the work. There is no magical pill where you could go into a yoga course or therapy or a 12-step program or whatever it is where or a Reiki session where someone says, okay, here's your pill, just take it and you'll be better. No, it is you doing the work with someone there showing you the steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Codependency is, is very, very common. Um, it, it also shows up in relationships with um, addiction and, and it doesn't, it, it's, it, it's not always in romantic relationships either. Like I was very, very, I was very codependent, very codependent. I have a video on my YouTube channel. It's one of the earlier videos that I put up um, shortly after the channel was, was formed. Um, it's called codependency and trauma bonding. And I go through and I um, explain what both of them are and different things that you can do to help yourself. A really good book um, on codependency is called Codependent No More by Melody Beattie. That book was life changing for me. I, I read that when my oldest three boys were really young. And um, I was in a narcissistic, narcissistic relationship with my um, ex-husband for 17 years. And so that book was very, very very eye-opening for me. And it showed me that I was not only codependent with my ex-husband, I was codependent with my alcoholic sister. I was codependent with a couple of uh, friends that were abusive. Um, and, and really what, like what Bryce was saying, I, I got this sense of value from being needed. I needed you to need me. And I, I didn't feel loved or valued unless I was being needed. And, and what a codependent person does is they enable, they enable the narcissist or the abuser or the addict to continue with their self-destructive behavior. They also rescue. For example, one thing that I was doing with my sister, she was an alcoholic. She would get drunk and she would get lost 
and she would be somewhere where she didn't know. And she would call me in the middle of the night and try to describe to me where she was. And I would have to go find her, you know, and, and that was, I was rescuing her. I was enabling her to continue with this destructive behavior. And, but when I would go pick her up and I would save her, I would feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm so valuable. I'm helping her. Like I needed to be needed. Like that, that sense of self, I needed someone else to need me to feel like I was anything. And yeah, it's just, and it's so subtle. It's so subtle. Like even, even with what I just went through with my PTSD being activated, like that is a part of trauma bonding. And I have been working through this and working through this. And, you know, I, I think that I'm, I get to a level where I'm well, and then something like this will come up again. And it's like, nope, there's still a little bit that needs to be addressed here. Um, You know, so it's just very, very eye opening how, when our nervous system gets wired in a certain way, healing is a very long process. It takes a very long time and it can get easy to get frustrated with yourself. Like, seriously, I have to do this again. Like I just visited, like I just, you know, it's just so frustrating sometimes. It's like, I thought I was done with this. I thought I passed this class. I thought I passed this class. Well, I'm glad you talked about the subtlety too, Emmy. And I will say because, um, I, I know when I went through my therapy, uh, because I attracted narcissists like crazy, I'm definitely the empath the, in, in a romantic relationship where I will be the codependent on a romantic relationship, um, which obviously I learned to value my sense of self as a child because I was around a shit ton of narcissists as a child. Um, and so that was my survival mechanism. That's what I what I understood to be real. And it's interesting because my therapist would say to me, like, because I thought I remember going into therapy when I first started, and every week I would go to my therapist, I would have found another personality disorder that I thought I was. That's how I know so much about personality disorders. And every week my therapist would say, This is not you. Then finally one week she was like, Bryce you are a very healthy minded person. We just need to tweak some things. She, she's like, you have a very tender heart. We just need to fix a few things. You do not have any of these disorders. You, Cause I was trying to see, oh, this is why I'm broken. This is because of this. Again, putting something on outside, a disorder that's not my, you know, myself, right? Putting it on something else. And she was like, and the fact that you actually think you have all these disorders means you probably don't. <laughs> so um, <laughs> people who have these disorders don't think they have them. Anyway, so I remember her saying that to me. And then she said, let's look at this codependency. Let's look at this one area of your life where you're showing signs of codependency. She goes, let's look at your whole life as a whole. And she goes, you got on an airplane by yourself and went to India. You got on an airplane by yourself and you traveled all over the world. But India was the focus because I was going to a school where I was going to be working very hard. And she goes, and you knew no one. And you knew it was going to be a lot of really, this is a, in between my trips to India. I was going to be going back eventually. Actually, when, when I was dismissed from therapy, when I said, she said, I think we're done here, was right before I went on another trip to India. Um, and she goes, this is a perfect time. Universe is telling you it's time for you. Go fly free, little bird, you know. Um, and she goes, so let's look at this. So she was like, in a lot of ways, and you're, and you know, the complexity of you, you're, you're very centered in who you are. You're very centered. You, you do things by yourself all the time that a lot of people would never do by themselves. But in this one area of your life, you're a little bit. We need to tweak this. We need to figure out why it is you keep repeating these patterns with men and why you become, cause I'm very, you know, I'm, I don't, I wouldn't call myself an alpha female, but I'm very, um, I'm a very strong personality. I will do things by myself. I, I, I don't mind doing things by myself. I will get shit done. I'm not submissive in life, except in these relationships. I would cow down. I would cower down. You know, I would, you know, I didn't want to, and, and it's, you're right, Emmy, like when the, the abuse would start and then the love bombing came after that. And if you've been through that, that cycle of being abused, knocked down, called all sorts of names. And then the love bombing, the, 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 the intensity of the abuse is matched 
with the intensity of the love bombing. So then all of a sudden you're on cloud nine because this person is so sorry and they really need you. And so you have to unwind that all the way. You know, in my EMDR sessions, my therapist never even focused on my boyfriend. We went all the way back to my dad, back to me being an eight-year-old. And that started to unwind where I felt the need to, for this one aspect of my life that needed to be healed, really massively healed. And so I want to want to make that clear. Like, I Emmy's mean, right. There's subtle things. When you're talking about something like codependency, you could have a person in your life that's like, that was like me, that very independent, very grounded in who they were, have really healthy friendships, but yet they always date assholes. And you don't know why. You're like, why is this person doing this? Why are they cowering down? You know, we've all had those friends that were like, this chick is so much better than her boyfriend. Like, this doesn't match, but yet she cowers down. That's that wound. And that's where that codependency is because that one part of yourself is broken. It needs to be fixed. You know, and, and so, and, and honestly, I know this sounds so cliche and so cheesy, but the journey of healing, again, I would never, tra I learned, I gained so much wisdom over being able to see the complexity of my own self that way. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. We all slip up and end up back in old patterns again, but I now recognize it. What I know what it is. I know. And it's like you said, the ego is trying to attack itself, Right. <laughs> so, and that's the beauty of it. Cause how many people are in these positions and they have no clue what's actually going on. They just think they have bad luck. How much power do you gain when you go, wait a minute. The only person who can fix this is me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not going to fix it by just sitting there and saying, okay, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my mindset. No, you have to go back and rework the patterning because there's a patterning there. You know. Yeah, the mind, the mind is just one part. I mean, you have you have your thoughts, which is your mind, you have your emotions, and you have your actions. If you don't have all three going on, moving in the same direction, you're going to continue to attract what what you always attracted. Yeah, where it's it's multifaceted. Um, law of attraction and manifestation is um it it it's not just about changing your mind or your mindset there's more um facets to it that that have to be addressed simultaneously yeah um yeah and the change is subtle too so after i was dismissed from therapy and i went back to india then i came back and i was not going to date for a while and i'll give you guys a clip like what what she's saying it's and, and after when I, I went on a date with a guy and I didn't know like if he wanted to be my boyfriend or if this was like just hanging out as friends. But my best friend, who is a gay guy um, up in Canada, Chris, I would, was talking to him and he was like, well, just go and hang out and see what happens. And so I'm hanging out with this guy. He cooks me a meal. We're sitting down talking, having a great conversation, great night. And then at the end of the night, I, I just leave. And I got in the car and I called my friend. Chris and I was like I, I was like I think that was a date but he didn't even try to kiss me and my friend Chris goes I like this guy he's he's showing you respect and over the course of time we ended up being together and it was always very respectful and that's the subtle change because I, I was like oh the drama the drama isn't there anymore because it doesn't need to be there anymore because I that's healed now you know, and so it is very subtle, like with you with the money, like all of a sudden money just started coming very subtle. It wasn't like fireworks went off in the sky and God yeah. came down. It was like, good job, my child. No, it's just <laughs> <laughs> subtle. I always laugh about that when, when I tell the story, when I got authorized, um, because, you know, when you go to India to, to study, you're not going for authorization because there's no application. You just get authorized one day or you don't. Like, it just happens. And I'll never forget, I, I when I got authorized, I was in the shala practicing and Strat walks up and he's like, you might come to my office 3 p.m., whatever. Whole day I was freaking out thinking I've done something wrong. That's my CPTSD, right? It has to be something bad, right? It can't be something good. And I go in there and I'm nervous. He was like, have I authorized you yet? And I said, no, sir. And he goes, okay, I authorize you now. And so he authorized me. I'm sitting there and I was like, oh, that's it? Like, I'm like holding my authorization paper. And I was like, where are the fireworks? 
<laughs> and blaming, like, and I just walked out with a piece of paper and I was like, oh, okay. I'm authorized now. Like, you know, like, <laughs> It's very subtle, like if there's no, you know, and and um, and so uh, yeah. Anyway, but and that's and that's what I, you know, throughout this this time using the astrology, which I do think is God's potion astrology. It's God's calendar and God's potion to be like, okay, we're gonna poke the bear, we're gonna kick the hornet's nest a little bit to see to see what you do. It's like in the Sophia Code where she says, "We're watching. I'm watching you with great curiosity." Mm -hmm. you are loved you are a part of me but i'm going to watch you with great curiosity to see how you do this and it's interesting because what emmy is saying about it also is a huge uh a huge part in the uh i was telling her in my bookcase i had a course of miracles right next to my ram das commentary paths to god living the bhagavad gita which is saying the exact same message they're all saying the same message your soul is perfect and complete don't confuse it with your fault sense of self. Your fault sense of self is just the roller coaster ride you're on in this life. Some lives we ride the spinning teacups and want to throw up every five minutes. Next life, we're on the lazy boat where we're just gliding through. It's a small world after all with no ups and downs and just smooth sailing. And I was telling Emmy, I love the Bhagavad Gita was one of the most life changing books I ever read. It's the first time in any um, Hindu scripture where yoga is ever mentioned. And it's a very small part of a bigger book, the Bhagavad Gita. And again, one of my favorite commentaries is Ram Dass's commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. And you can see my book is so old and I, I, it's like pages have turned color. I've got so many underlined places. But I said to Emmy, this is something I'd underlined probably 10 years ago in this book, which she was telling me off camera about her realization. And I flipped to this page, page 147. And I'd underline this again, like probably 10 years ago. The trouble is, we can only tell the truth when we cease to identify with the parts of ourselves that we think we need to protect. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the parts of ourselves that Emmy wanted to protect, that anybody that has trauma responses want to protect. That's the false sense of self. Because the true yeah. self doesn't need protection. It just is. The, the true self is invulnerable. Indestructible untouchable yeah now again disclaimer if you're being abused that does not mean that you take the abuse because your soul right. is you, you get yourself out of that situation we're talking about the after effect of the nervous system and learning how as patanjali says at the end of the second pada you're learning how to control your senses the senses are going to do what the senses are going to do you know, Emmy and I, and I know a lot of people watching have also been di formally diagnosed with CPTSD as well. Probably never going to fully go away. It's probably always going to be kind of in your system. You're now with your work are able to now spot it for what it is. Ah, as Emmy said, I see you, ego. You artful little dodger, you, you sneaky little son of a bitch. <laughs> I'll give you props. You could be quite clever at times, but I see you. You know, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. So, ah, well, I know you guys, I want to also kind of go through since, so this is the book I'm talking about, Paths to God, Living the Bhagavad Gita. I would recommend anybody getting this commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. Also, A Course in Miracles. I will put a link to A Course in Miracles. You can you can order A Course in Miracle on Amazon. I'll also put a link to the, the um, course that Emmy's talking about. I was just looking at it before we signed on. Um, I'll put a link to that down below. But do you mind, Emmy, if we take a look at the upcoming shadow work together to go through some of the stuff with our viewers quickly? Yeah, absolutely. All right. You In the, the first 30 days, I did this daily, but 60 days is a lot to do daily. So we're just doing it every few days. So today we're on Friday, um, which, again, you both uh, had the hip stretches in the morning and you could have done just my sun salutations for beginners or the 20 minute Ashtanga beginner or 30 minute bar with Marnie Alton, or you could do both together. You could try both together or for the experience, you could do the half primary with Ashtanga nurse or the 60 minute bar fit with Lori. Who's a new, a new uh, bar teacher. I've incorporated in with Marnie Alton, a very different bar teacher. Um, so let's do the journals questions to ask yourself as of tomorrow, you're a week into the challenge. So as of Saturday, you are a week into the challenge, you guys. That's a lot. A week's a lot of work. 
Um, how has your perception of yourself changed? I would love to hear that, especially listening to our conversation today. How has your perception of you changed? Are you feeling anger, shock, resistance? Please note, none of these feelings are wrong. They just are. Let yourself be with these feelings for a moment and then lean into why you may be feeling this. Because again, this is the reaction of the nervous system, right? Doesn't have to be as extreme as CPTSD. It could just be something very small that your nervous system is reacting to. So now you get to observe that. Um, is this challenge harder than you expected? What is reality and what is expectation? In the past, has your expectation ruin the reality of an experience? Can you let in, go of any expectation you put on yourself for this challenge and just allow the reality of the experience to unfold? Any, how many times in your life ha has your expectation of something actually ruined the reality of it? Many, many times. I would say so many times up until maybe just a few years ago when I just started practicing detachment. Mm -hmm. Practicing detachment was huge especially in meditation because i'd go in meditation and i would think i would have these expectations like my mind should be blank i should be completely calm and if anything was other than that i would try to change it instead of just observing what is instead of just being i wanted it to be a certain way or i expected it to be a certain way and when it wasn't and when i couldn't make that happen i'd get so frustrated and irritated oh what the hell is the point of meditating i can't even this is just frustrating you know so yeah a lot and i put that because how many people probably started this challenge thinking i'm going to get up every day i'm going to exercise i'm going to journal i'm going to meditate life is going to be so great you had this like idea in your head of like the sun was going to be shining through the blinds every morning even was raining because the birds were chirping and you were doing it and you saw you envision yourself like sweating in your cute little lululemons and just looking all cute and then all of a sudden a weekend and you're sore you've cried your meditation was hard the cold shower sucked and now you want to quit because it because it, the reality but that's the thing about the shadow work is it's not supposed to be bluebirds and butterflies and rainbow it's supposed to be that it's supposed to be the muck and the mud of yourself your true self and so don't let and when that muck and that's what i always say like in the yoga world pretty yoga is boring messy yoga is super interesting so don't let your expectation of yourself ruin the reality because in reality the, those those uh, those ugly thought you were gonna fucking die and you wanted to punch through the computer screen the teacher that's interesting i don't care about the pretty stuff i want to know why you reacted this way that's what's interesting that's what you that's how why ram Doss says like when something hard happens ah interesting Interesting. So this is a huge concept. And again, this is also a concept that's spoken about in the Bhagavad Gita as well, expectation versus reality. So can you let any expectation you put on yourself up for this challenge, let go of it and just allow the reality of the, the experience to unfold? Where can you apply this in other areas of your life? Do you put expectations on your partner that aren't fair? And then when your partner doesn't live up to those expectations, does it ruin the reality of the moment? Do you expect your partner you know, I realized for me with love languages, I'm someone that gives love languages by service and gifts, like doing things for people and giving gifts. That's my love language. But I accept love by touch and words of affirmation. You know, but if your partner doesn't know your love, love language, it doesn't mean that's not the reality. They don't love you. It's just you, you need to have that comfort, right? So do you guys see what I'm saying? Like we sometimes ruin beautiful moments because our expectation doesn't match the reality and so where can you apply this in your 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 work to your job is letting go and allowing life to happen hard or easy for you we will just discuss this deeper tomorrow in your second self-study saturday T tonight you can do your oil bath all that information's there so tomorrow you're going to be researching dharma and karma what is dharma what is karma what is your role in both i won't Give too many spoilers because I really want people to, to look it up for themselves. Um, how is karma? How does karma work in your life? How is the law of dharma ruling your life? By understanding these two concept, concepts, can you let go of any expectations you have put on yourself during this challenge or during your life? Is it possible to work towards a goal but let go of the outcome of that goal? As Emmy was saying, detachment. 
This is a concept we will explore this upcoming week. And this is something that was mind-blowing for me when I first started studying the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna basically tells Arjuna, don't do this work for the fruits of your labor. Do it for the work. When you're in Navasana, when you're in a really looking at it first in your exercise if you're in a really hard exercise and your mind is screaming and your body's on fire can you settle into like enjoying that and loving that friction instead of the fruits of your labor instead of thinking oh i'm doing this because i'm gonna get a small stomach and i'm gonna look great in a bathing suit in summertime no that doesn't matter what matters is right here right now tomorrow never comes the past is never coming back and tomorrow never comes all you have is now right now in that moment of that navasana of that handstand of that kickboxing of that bar where you're sweating and your legs are shaking and your muscles are on fire can you settle into that right here and right now without any expectation of the outcome of that work we see and how can you see that in your life too can you go on a date with a guy and not have any expectation just be in the reality what what more what is there more beauty there that you can see if you're not if you don't have any attachment to an outcome are there things you're missing is there joy in love that you're missing because you're too focused on an expectation and not the reality what about yourself are you putting so many expectations on yourself that you can't see the reality of who you really are and are there things about the reality of who you are that are way more beautiful than any expectation you put on yourself so I hope, and that, that's going to get to Dharma and Karma as well. All right. So that's your self-study Saturday. Sunday, Sunday, fun day, where we get to do fun exercises. You can do um, sun salutations, or you can do a 10-minute Zumba class for beginners, or Jane Fonda's low, low impact. Or I found all the Jane Fonda videos with the 80s hair and everything. It's fantastic. Um, are the sun salutations experience? You can do Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies, or if you want to, you can if you're if you're able to, you can uh, come to my yoga class at Sacred Garden Yoga, or you could take a walk, a 60 minute walk with your friends and family. All right. Yesterday, you explore the concepts of Dharma and Karma after a day's worth of contemplation. What other thoughts around this topic come up for you? Are you a person of faith? If so, why? If not, why? Doesn't matter because Dharma comes into having faith, being able to rely on faith. Do you believe in a higher person purpose in life? If so, why? If not, why? What experiences in your life have left you to feel the way you do about spirituality? And again, nobody is looking at this journal, guys. I saw somebody in the group chat. Put it, posted a picture of their journal with the lock on it. I loved it because like when we were kids, we would have locks on our journals. So even if you're a 50 year old woman and you want to go get one of those kid diaries with the locks on it, do it. Cause if you don't want your husband reading it, you know, or your kids reading it, if you really want to get vulnerable with yourself and I really encourage you, no one's going to be looking at your journal. All right. So you can be as raw and as vulnerable as you need to, to get that out of you. So you can see your, see the reality of who you are in a different light. All right, Monday, um, you are going to be doing uh, either bar again. Yeah, you have 45 minutes for experience. With, you have the eight minute for beginners, 45 minutes with Marnie, or the 60 minutes with Lori. And you uh, have the option to start off with some sun, some sun salutations. All right, to further co contemplate the concepts of Dharma and Karma in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna teaches a concept that is very hard for many people. Krishna tells Arjuna to love the work for the sake of the work and not for the fruits of labor. How does this apply to you? We already spoke about this. Can you allow yourself to be in the moment with the work? Can you love the hard stuff? Can you move deeper into your workout, especially when it's hard, and learn to love the heat and the friction caused by the work? How does this change your outlook on exercise? Can you enjoy the movement of the exercise without thinking about the benefits of exercise? How does this concept of enjoying the work for the sake of the work apply to your perception of reality and expectation and the theory of Dharma and Karma? Do these concepts allow you to let go of expectation? All right, same closing. Um, we'll go through one more day, Tuesday. Uh, Jan and then we'll pick up with the February stuff a little bit in a few a, a few more days. So Tuesday, January 31st, you can do sun salutations. Oh, now today. So now I gave all levels. So first do the warm-up hips if you want to, then sun salutations with 45-minute bar. Do your five-minute cold shower. How did you feel how only having an, one, an exercise for all levels? 
was there any anxiety? So when you when choice was taken away from you today and you only had one exercise to do, did you feel levels of anxiety? Were you able to, to practice letting go of expectation? So if you're a beginner to exercise and you saw today that you didn't have the eight minute option anymore, you only had the 45 minute option, were you able to like lean into that? Did you surprise yourself? Or were you panicking because all of a sudden, you know, I, I never say in these challenges that you have to finish the exercise. You know, what, what pressures are you putting on yourself? If you participated in the first 30 day challenge, what has changed for you in both your body and your mind? Go back and review the three things you want to work on this challenge. How have they shifted? How has your perception of yourself changed during this challenge? Is exercise hard for you? What mental traps have you found regarding exercise? Contemplate the mind, the power of thought, and the power of belief. We will be looking deeper into this during the week. And so I'll leave it there for now. Um, once again, if you, uh, are not, if you don't have the template, you can still email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com and I will send you the template. It is never too late. We're not, we're not grading you, are we, Emmy? Like, no, we're not asking for your homework. Like, this is just for you, you know, to do what you can do. And so, um, I'm kind of, I want to, Emmy, I'm thinking next week, if it's okay with you, we can go deeper into the power of exercise in the mind and how exercise can be used as a tool or, for abuse and a tool for liberation because i know you have a lot of experience with that as well and expectation and reality because i kind of want to see also how you guys are let us know in the comment section below um is this like a new concept for you dharma karma expectation reality like where in your life are you kind of like sabotaging yourself because you're and you're, you might even be doing it self uh, subconsciously i think a lot of us do it subconsciously where we have an expectation you know, we think we're going to be skipping through a, 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 we think about going on a run that we're going to be skipping through a field of butterflies and, you know, bunnies are going to be hopping around. Meanwhile, we're cramping, we're sweating, our boobs popping out, like hair is falling out, mascara running down the face, you know? <laughs> um, so it's, it's, but there's beauty in that too. You know, there's beauty, uh, there's beauty in that. I, uh, I'll tell you guys a funny story we'll leave off on. Um, I my, my first trip to Africa, I was in my early 20s. And my ex at the time, the guy I was dating at the time, um, I, I said one video not to brag. I've had a lot of boyfriends not to brag or anything. But, <laughs> um, but his family were white Africans in Zimbabwe. So they were of British descent and they owned these big farms uh, in Zimbabwe. And this was all during the whole Mugabe situation with white farmers and stuff. So there was a lot of tension there. And of course, I thought it was a great idea to go during this time because um, my soul loves a challenge. Well, I was a big runner at this time. I was a long distance runner. And I got to their farm in Quakeway, the town they lived in. And um, I was asking my ex got on a four wheeler and like showed me where it was safe for me to run because going too far into the bush, you've got wild animals, all sorts of stuff. So he was showing me like where it was safe to run. And the next morning, he taught me to say Manguanani, which meant good morning in the local language, Manguanani. So I was running the next morning, and all the workers in the farm were out laboring, doing their, their work. And I was running, and they would stop and look at me very strangely. And I would say Manguanani and keep running. And they would look at me, then they'd look behind me, then they'd look at me, and they would, like look behind me very confused. And I came back to the house, and I told my ex, and they were like staring at me and kept looking behind me. He goes, yeah, because no one here runs for activity. They thought something was probably chasing you. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no one here runs for like fun. <laughs> you know, like, they're like, this crazy white girl's running and they're probably confused because nothing is chasing you. And they're <laughs> expecting like something like Dumaine to run too. Like, they see you running, Dumaine to start running too. And they're so confused because I mean it was it was like they literally dropped what they were doing and kept looking behind me like and I was like what the hell are they doing you know I was like what I mean you know like oh my gosh that's hilarious the crazy American is out there running in the bush you know just for fun <laughs> um, so um, yeah so let's talk about expectation and reality like that if I had not observed that I wouldn't have that yeah I, I still crack up about that now so like what the hell is she running from um so anyway <laughs> any words you want to say to our lovely viewers Emmy before we sign off for today um yeah just don't take yourself so seriously don't take life so seriously 
have a laugh. It's been a rough couple months. Go watch a funny movie. Go look up some jokes. Tell your kids some jokes. Ask your kids to tell you some jokes. My little, <laughs> my little guy told me the funniest joke. I can't even remember it, but I laughed so hard I snorted. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do something lighthearted. It's been it's been a rough bit. And you know what, with that being said, Emmy, I mean, I've been asking a lot for our viewers for the comment section, but if you have any funny stories you want to sh share in the comment section about, um, about, I just thought of another story too, but I won't say it because I don't want to embarrass the person. Uh, it was somebody who was farting in a yoga class so loudly, so many times, and finally this person goes, I had chickpeas for lunch. <laughs> And I could not keep my shit together for the rest of the class. I was laughing so hard. So, um, so if you have any funny stories of where the expectation did not meet the reality, but it was very, but the reality was very comical, leave them down in the comment section below so that we can all laugh with each other. So, you guys got it. This is it's it's hard work, but that's why we came to Earth School, right? That's Master why class. We came. Master class. Master class. <laughs> <laughs> Next life, we can go to Venus and just be in the spa. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds lovely. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Well, we love you. I will be putting all the links down in the description box below, including Emmy's channel. If you are have not, if this is your first time seeing Emmy, go subscribe to her channel. And um, we'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.